I have sauerkraut in my refrigerator from last Thanksgiving when my father visited and I ate some the other day and I didn't die. Okay, today we're gonna to be making a lacto-fermented vegetable recipe that I absolutely love and the kids do too. It helps them get extra probiotics into their diet. It helps build their gut bacteria and it's pretty much the only way I can get them to eat vegetables. Um, so what I've done is I've added three tablespoons of pink Himalayan sea salt to a quart jar and I've added water and I've given it a shake to help it dissolve. This is gonna be our salt water brine in our lacto-fermenting process. We're gonna be using cauliflower, carrots, and red pepper. And you wanna make sure that you're using organic products when you make fermented foods. We're also gonna be using a bay leaf, a crushed clove of garlic, and I also have coriander seeds and black peppercorns that are gonna flavor our vegetables today. So without further ado, I'm gonna to get to it. The first thing you have to do is wash your vegetables and peel your carrots. Lacto-fermenting vegetables is a great way to use up any produce. If you suspect that you're not going to use vegetables in a certain amount of time, you can lacto-ferment them. It simply is just a process which you add salt water to some vegetables and you let them sit for a week and they ferment. They stay crispy, they don't get soggy, they're nice and crisp. They're absolutely amazing. It just maintains the freshness of your products so that you and your family can have your garden fresh veggies year round. So if you, if you happen to grow cabbage or carrots, cauliflower, anything like that, you can lacto-ferment your peppers, you can make lacto-fermented relishes, ketchup. There's so many different things that you can make. It's such a beautiful process and it really just preserves the nutrients, the beneficial bacteria that's on these vegetables. They go right into here and then you have an amazing probiotic rich snack or side dish or condiment to all of your meals. So I just have the cauliflower right now and I'm going to break it up into pieces. And for this recipe, you're going to want to use about one cup of each of the vegetables. So I'm going to have one cup of carrots, one cup of cauliflower, and one cup of red peppers. But basically what I'm going to do is whatever I can cram into this jar is what I'm going to use. It's about a cup each. So I'm just going to break the pieces off into edible sizes. Probably what I'll do is just, I'm gonna cut through the core and then I'm gonna break it open like that and it works really well. Then I can see the individual stems to cut them off and I'll probably slice up the core as well and include them into my ferment because the stem has a lot of nutrition in it as well. So I'm just gonna rinse these off real quick. Oops, I'm gonna finish slicing them up into bite-sized pieces. That makes it kid friendly so that the kids can just eat it easily and then also if you cut them up into sizes about like this they fit into the jar much better. I haven't actually made this recipe in quite a while. We ate through the last pit. I lacto fermented ginger carrots and garlic carrots and the kids loved all of that and it really helped their immune systems throughout six season. I'm gonna show you guys how I do peppers. I cut around the core of the pepper first. I cut the pepper in half. And then bam, look. The core just comes right out. Oh, this pepper smells amazing. It smells so good. You just want your pepper to be nice and crisp, so get rid of all the white stuff if you can. Then I'm just gonna slice them up into about one inch chunks. That makes them kind of like chips. I have peeled my carrots. I am able to slice them at an angle so that I get this chip type shape. Okay, so now we have all of our vegetables in this colander. And I am going to add a teaspoon of coriander seeds. I'm almost out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump those in there. And then I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of peppercorns. Put those in there. I've got one bay leaf and one to two cloves of garlic. You know most recipes don't ever call for enough garlic, so I like to add extra. But for this one, because last time the garlic was a little bit overpowering, I'm just gonna do one clove of garlic. You're gonna wanna start putting your vegetables in there. 
or three tablespoons of salt into one quart of water. And I'm just gonna top my vegetables off with this. I need room for my glass leek. Then I'm gonna use my glass leek to hold everything down below the brine. I'm just gonna give it a gentle press to press everything down. I'm gonna put my lid on. And you know what, I think I'm gonna do a whole nother jar that I'll be able to split up for my friends. The gases that are produced during the fermentation are gonna come up, they're gonna release because this is like a nipple on a bottle. It's just a silicone lid and it has a tiny hole in it. Nothing can get inside, but the force of air can escape. Now we have our two quart jars of fermented vegetables that are gonna make our bodies feel amazing. It's gonna help us digest a lot easier. It's gonna give us beneficial bacteria and probiotics and lots of nutrition from the actual vegetables themselves. Now these are preserved and once they're fermented in about a week, I'll put the exact amount of time in the description below. Make sure you check out that description because it's gonna have the airlock mason tops it's going to have the mason jars, it's going to have the glass weights, and everything that you need to start your easy fermenting processes. Now my pumpkin bread is ready. Check out that recipe. Real quickly, I just wanted to show you guys how my cranberries were doing. Hi. These are honey fermented cranberries, and I'm going to link the recipe above. Uh, basically, it's just you prick the cranberries, you throw them in a jar, and you pour honey over them, and then you use a weight. But I wanted you guys to see the gases that are going to come out of these cranberries right now when I press it down. All of the bubbles and things. See how fun? It's really, really cool. This came with our juicer, but um, I like to use it when I ferment because it's an amazing packer. So and then I just go in here and I fish out the glass weight, I grab it, and then I just place it back on top of all of the cranberries that I have pressed down. So that helps keep all of the cranberries submerged in the honey. I'm about four days into this ferment. And these cranberries are gonna be going until Thanksgiving. I'm going to use an immersion blender and make like a cranberry sauce. And I know that this is excessive. We're also gonna use this cranberry sauce for Christmas. Then I'll transfer it to my refrigerator with this plastic lid. If you use metal lids, they get corroded by the stuff that's in the fermented brine. So you wanna make sure you're using plastic lids. These things are amazing. They are a lot easier to use than the two-piece mason lids. They're just a lot better. So make sure you get some of these for the products that you make at home. When we make our toothpaste, we put it in little jars, little mason jars, and these lids are great. They come in wide mouth and they come in regular mouth sizes. So for toothpaste, for the deodorant that we make, and I will be making a video soon showing you guys our method for making those products, and they both work fabulous, so stay tuned for that information. Next up, we're gonna be making sauerkraut. I have a huge purple cabbage, but I'm not gonna bust into that yet. What I do have right here is a smaller half portion of green cabbage that I need to use up. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel off some of the, the leaves that have gotten kinda yucky on the outside. And then I'm gonna slice this really finely and make some more sauerkraut. I do have a sauerkraut video and I'll link that above, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys how easy it is to make this. So you want to slice this very thin and it takes a while, so I'll do a time lapse on it. Just gonna sprinkle all of this with some salt. And this is about um, six cups of cabbage right here. And I've used a tablespoon of salt. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start helping that process by squeezing and massaging the cabbage. That really helps to release the juices in it. Kind of bruises the cabbage and allows it to release. It's already starting to become wet. So I know that it the salt is doing the job to extract the cabbage. It's going to make an amazing brine. Now, what brine the cabbage does not make for itself in the sauerkraut recipe, I will make a brine. I 
have a tiny bit left over from my last ferment. So I'm just gonna let this sit for about a half hour. We have let the cabbage sit for about 30 minutes. With clean hands, we're just gonna take the cabbage and start packing it into our jar. Okay, then you wanna use something. You wanna pound down the cabbage so that there's no air left in the jar. If your cabbage has not produced enough brine to submerge itself, here I have some leftover saltwater brine from my last ferment that I made just a few minutes ago. And then you can put your glass weight to keep all the cabbage submerged. Then we just close it with our lid and mason tops airlock and leave it to sit for a week or two in a cool, dry, dark place. I'll be moving all of that stuff to my cabinet in just a little bit once I get the kitchen cleaned up, the space cleared in my fermenting cabinet. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, for watching through these recipes. As always, please give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe. Make sure that you're hitting the notification bell so that you're getting those updates each time we post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Happy holidays.